We've been talking a lot about Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe and also comparing the original game to the new one, but today I have 17 facts for you that you probably didn't notice within this game. Now some of these facts are based on the old game too. Since there are a lot of people that never played the original, it's a combination between new facts and also old ones that a lot of people may have missed with this new game. But if you guys have any facts at all from the old game and even the new game, let me know in the comments down below and I'll be sure to add you in the next video. But thank you guys so much for your love and support with Kirby. Kirby has been so much fun. On on the Nintendo Switch and you guys made it even more fun talking about these videos and theories and stuff. It's amazing. But thank you guys so much. Make sure you guys leave a like and subscribe to stay up to date on all things Kirby and all things Nintendo in general. And let's jump into the video of 17 facts that you may have missed within Kirby and the Forgotten Land Deluxe. So first off, this might be blatantly obvious if you turn the game on multiple times, but some people just leave the game in sleep mode, so you might never see this, but there are different colored Kirbys that could appear on the title screen. You'll have green, yellow, and the other playable Kirbys with a multi player friend in this game, which is really cool, but it's also a little weird to start the game and see a green Kirby at the start. Of course, you probably know by now, every Wii game has a startup sound when you're in the Wii menu, but of course, with no Wii menu, we don't have Kirby Return to Dreamland's startup sound, or do we? Well, we actually do in Mary Magaland. If you go to find the stickers, you'll notice it'll play the familiar tune when you boot up the game on the Wii. Apparently this one has been something that has been known throughout Kirby's Return to Dreamland already, but apparently in Magalore's Soul, the second phase, you'll actually hear Magalore call out and scream for Kirby's name as if he needs help. Now, I am never really able to hear this, no matter how loud I turn the game up, um, but yeah, apparently a lot of people say that this is a thing and it's been a thing for a very long time, so maybe you can hear it. You can definitely hear a little something in the background, but I don't know how people were able to make out that that's Magalore crying for Kirby's name. I don't know, but you can definitely hear a little something. Master pointed out that there are three hidden Magalore stickers every day, and this could reference the hidden Mickey Mouses in Walt Disney World. Also, Magalore calls this theme park the funnest place in the universe, which also could reference that theme park. Someone tell Magalore that he's referencing the wrong theme park, because we have Super Nintendo World in Orlando now. So in the Galactonite battle in the true arena, you'll notice that if you play with Kirby or Bandana Waddle D, it'll always play the Landia theme song for Phase 1 and the Return to Dreamland Galactonite remix for Phase 2. But, if you play as King DDD or Meta Knight, the music for Phase 1 will be Moon Warrior's theme from Kirby Fighters 2, and the music for Phase 2 is Galactic Knight's theme from Planet Robobot, which is pretty cool that they made music differences, but take a listen. Another musical fact for you, did you know Phase 2 of HRD3 now plays the King DDD boss battle theme from Forgotten Land, which is Roar of DDD? Did you know for the new Howl Room added in this game, which is in World 7-2, it makes you wait a very long time before actually entering this Howl Room, until all the lifts actually go back up, allowing you to go back where you came from. Well, it's not just a random amount of time that you're waiting, you're waiting actually 86 seconds. And if you've been following any Kirby information I've been posting, even about Forgotten Land, you'll know that 86 means Haru in Japanese, which is the Japanese word for Howl. So it's a little bit of a play on words, and you'll see the number 86 pop up a lot in the Kirby games. The Kine and Mind Mask are some of the only masks in the game that actually have attributes in-game. Yes, if you put these masks on, you can actually go underwater and use a better version of the water gun ability, the same way you would if you had the water ability, where you could shoot bigger bubbles underwater, which is kind of crazy. I didn't believe it when I read this, but that is actually really cool. It does make me wonder, though, if any other mask in the game has any other hidden abilities that we don't know about yet. So this one's very mysterious. When starting the Magalore Epilogue side mode, the intro 
scene actually shows Magalore's soul being defeated before Magalore was sent into this new realm. Now, canonically, it is said that Magalore's soul and the X form beforehand are not canon, as Kirby's Return to Dreamland's extra mode and the true arena are not canon either. I would love to hear you guys' thoughts on what you think about this, because this could actually mean that maybe the events of the true arena and everything with the arena are now canon. Who knows? One of these stone transformations you can get is the stone Meta Knight, Bandana D, and King DDD, and it actually uses all of their star allies models, interestingly enough. You can definitely tell by at least King DDD's head, he doesn't have that big beefy neck like he does now in Forgotten Land, and obviously Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe. Obviously, Mary Magdalene is in a 3D space, but the theme park actually uses the same engine as the Forgotten Land. The Waddle Dees are the same character models, and they have very similar animations as well, but they use the same technique with the frame rate that they did in Kirby and the Forgotten Land. For instance, the frame rates of the characters slow down from a distance to keep the game as a whole from slowing down. You'll notice the bosses in the background and some of the Waddle Dees look a lot choppier because you're far away, but the closer you get, the more they'll smooth out. And Kirby uses his taunts on the Warp Star at the theme park, he always faces the camera, and it'll even like zoom the camera in on him. But if you move in a direction while also taunting, he will do his taunt in that direction, and the camera will not zoom in. Also, just like in the Forgotten Land, the Waddle Dees will actually wave back and interact with Kirby when he taunts toward them, which is pretty cool. Unfortunately, the bosses don't taunt back. They just kind of do their own thing as you're waving in front of them. I guess some of them are still upset about you defeating them in the story mode, so it kind of makes sense. Sorry for the lack of quality in this one, because when you record things on the Switch, it comes out at like 20p, I don't know why, but the end of Magalore Epilogue's extra stage, you'll get to the final section and there'll be blocks that spells out Magalore. If you hit it with a Mega Laser, you will get an 86 combo, once again referencing the Haru Hal Easter Egg. If you go to the jukebox in this game, you'll notice just like in the Forgotten Land and some of the past games, the different color music notes actually represents the different composers. There's a couple new colors in this game, so I'm not 100% sure what colors match up to who, but yeah, it's a definitely cool easter egg. You know all the bosses in Magalore's epilogue got enhanced thanks to the Master Crown, because all of their descriptions talk about bringing all the fruit pieces to their boss and their master, and also you can see on them is different gold plating that resembles that of the Master Crown we'll see later on with the different sphere doomers and also the Master Crown's gold plating itself on the tree. The Electricity Duder has gold cuffs around his wrist. Fiery Puffer has a golden necklace, Hydriath also has golden shackles on his wrist, and a golden crown with golden water or liquid coming out of the crown. And of course we know the Rampaging Doomers have the golden horns, and also the golden dust that they leave behind. And of course we see the same golden crowns and tail plating for the Crown Doomer. So this just shows that the Master Crown had influence on everything in Magalore's epilogue. If you take the names of every world in Magalore's epilogue and put the first letters all together, it'll spell out Apple, because the worlds are Arrow Gree Dimension, Pyred Dimension, Possiblue Dimension, Locondra Dimension, and then throw in the Ethereal Altar at the end, the first letters of each of these worlds will spell out Apple. And if you've finished Magalore's epilogue, it's very obvious why. And last but not least, there is a very rare chance that you could pull out a fish or a golden fan out of the Super Sword. Now, I did this about 100 times, and it took me all full 100 to finally get one of each, as it's very rare. And, of course, as you probably know from watching my last video, you can even pull out the Morpho Knight Blade from Kirby in the Forgotten Land. But that one, I feel like, is one of the most rare. And, of course, it just comes down to odds, because I've seen some people get it very quickly. And for me, for instance, it took me about 200 swings before I could even see this one pull up. Also, if you didn't see before, Gigant Sword is returned from Kirby in the Forgotten Land as well. That is 17 facts and details you might have missed in Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe. But thank you guys so much that submitted all of your different facts. If you have any facts that were just in the original game or even in the new game again, let me know down below for people that might have missed it in the original or even some new ones that you found. Thank you so much for tuning in and also make sure you leave a like and subscribe to stay up to date on all things Kirby and Nintendo in general. And like always, I'll see you on the next one. See you guys.